Welcome to This Organized Life. If you're a mom, wife, or coffee lover seeking advice on how to reduce clutter and reclaim time, look no further than your host, Lori Palau, founder of Simply Be Organized and author of Hot Mess, A Practical Guide to Getting Organized. For a lot of people, clutter is their dirty little secret, but it doesn't have to be. Each week, we will share practical tips, chat with experts, and provide strategies on how to keep you organized. I hope that by sharing our stories, you feel a little less alone and more empowered to tackle the areas that are holding you back. So let's get started. Everybody and welcome to today's episode of This Organized Life. I am your host, Lori Palau, and today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite topics, coziness. So I am super honest with everybody who knows me that my favorite place to be is in my house, in my pajamas, either with a cup of coffee, a glass of wine, my dog, like just being cozy, snuggled under a blanket. And I love that. And so what I've always tried to do was create spaces for other people to feel that way in their own home. And for some people that comes really naturally and organically and other people just don't, they feel very disconnected. And our guest today is an actual coziness consultant. It's a thing. And I feel like I would like to be a coziness consultant. So um, joining me, and we're gonna bring her out in a minute, is Amber Brand. And Amber, like I said, she is a coziness consultant. And what that really means is that she helps everyday people like you and me create spaces that align with their values. So she does or applies what she calls values-based thinking. And we're going to talk about that in detail, what that really means, what that looks like, how you can achieve that. Um, Because she shares a similar philosophy to me that our home should be basically like a sanctuary and not that there isn't craziness. We know we've got, you know, kids and animals and like life that's going a million miles an hour. But at the end of the day, we want our places to be a place of calm, not a place of anxiety. There's so many external factors that are constantly keep us on edge and you want to be able to exhale when you come home. And it just seems like such a far away concept for so many people, especially if you're dealing with clutter, whether it's physical clutter, emotional clutter, calendar clutter, whatever that is, it can often be really um, just uh, overwhelming to even know where to begin. And so I invited Amber to come on today to really unpack it. And as we are kind of heading in or we're in the midst of the holiday season, if you're kind of listening to this in real time, I felt like this is a perfect time for her to just talk about mindset and some of the practical ways that you can start to create the home that you really want and what that looks like. So without further ado, let me welcome my friend, Amber Brandt to the show. Welcome, Amber. Hello. Thanks for having me. Oh, I am so glad that you are here. And um, (laughs) as I said, like uh, coziness is my jam. Like that is my (laughs) thing. I am a homebody. It's like on my about page, I'm like, I'm a homebody. That's it. Mm -hmm, Um, mm -hmm. Which surprised a lot of people because I'm so like, but really my place to be is at home. So talk to us a little bit about you. Give us your backstory. Tell us a little bit about who you are and how this whole coziness consulting came to be. So the short of it is that uh, my husband and I enrolled in a class um, that we spent a lot of time answering questions about ourselves and doing some internal work. And it was really around uh, identifying your values Um, so that you could live more intentionally around them. And Mm -hmm. so when we were buying our first home, we used a lot of that work that we had done, a lot of those realizations we'd had around ourselves um, to have conversations about what we were looking for in a house, uh, to be really intentional about the square footage, how it was utilized. Could we host well in that home because hospitality was important to us? Um, and we just answered a lot of questions before we even started looking. And so then as we moved in, we chose a house, we moved in and we started decorating it. I had just internalized things that I knew that were true about me and about us and the 
culture we wanted in our marriage and in our family and how we wanted people to feel when they came over. And so we were just doing that already. And when people would come over and see our house, the feedback we got all the time was just, this is so cozy. I love it. When I'm, when I buy a house, could you help me? And we started to hear it so regularly that it almost became like a joke. Like they would start to say, it and I would just look at my husband and we would both smile. Like, I cannot believe someone's saying this again, which we shouldn't have been surprised because we were doing this important work. Um, but so that's how I kind of backed in to doing this. It was like one day I realized, I think there's something to this. And so, um, I did, I started helping clients and then I did some certification to become an interior decorator. And that was about four years ago now. Yeah. And just to, just to kind of clarify, cause obviously you and I have talked a bunch like offline, you, you are now like officially at interior deck, like you have certifications, yes. but you didn't go to school. This was not your profession. This was something no. that really stemmed from again, understanding how do I want my house to reflect our values and how we mm -hmm. live, which mm -hmm. I haven't necessarily heard before, like articulated like that. I think people mm. might think about it unofficially, but not really to sit down, like you said, and answer questions about things. And I just love that because when we stop and think, I think any of us, present company included, when you think about what's important to you mm -hmm. and then say, okay, is, am I setting up the systems in my home, whatever that looks like, am I setting the stage to support that? And for a lot mm -hmm. of people, it might not be, you know, it mm -hmm. might be like, mm -hmm. you know, I want to create a gathering space, but like you don't have, oh, but your dining room is a, is a dumping ground, right? I want, I want right. us to sit around for big family meals. So I love the fact that it's coming back to what is important to us and mm -hmm. are we doing that? Um, I want to also coziness. I think we, we have pictures in our minds of what things are. And, you know, again, I, I said to me, coziness is sitting on the couch under a blanket with right. a drink in my hand. You know, what do you, how do you define coziness? Because I, I think like most things, there's probably kind of a spectrum that it falls under. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, when we started doing that work specifically, I saw these things that were very like disconnected in my life that kind of gave me a similar feeling. For instance, like, I loved, I love miniatures. I'm like obsessed with like tiny things. And so when I would go to like tchotchkes, like little tchotchkes, tasteful, tasteful tchotchkes. <laughs> no, but like, you know, tiny versions of things, baby okay. versions of things. Um, but so like I would go to an antique store and I would see them and I would be like, oh my gosh, that's so cute. I just love it. And if I had that in my house, every time I saw that, it would bring me joy. Right. And so I started seeing things that I kind of, minimized because I was like, that feels silly that I get that excited about that thing. But when I started to like, think about it, it was like, well, no, there's nostalgia connected to that because mm -hmm. those are the sorts of things you see at a grandma's house or like, what is like, when I started being curious, instead of saying to myself, this is silly, that this feels like cozy and kind of exciting. And like, I don't know, I love it. Um, when I started being fair to that feeling and sort of saying, okay, why does this make me feel this way? Then it was like, oh, because, right, this is, I, I, I have a nostalgic connection to this thing and that feels cozy to me. Um, and so for me, yeah, I think when I talk about cozy, it's like, there's those obvious things that it's like candles and a fire and a cozy blanket and slippers. Um, but I also think it's, it's, parts of your life that bring you joy and finding ways to incorporate that um, without like, right, accumulating more clutter, just being very specific, right, about things that surrounding yourself, if it's fresh flowers, if it's whatever, those things that bring you joy when you can, in reasonable, responsible ways, <laughs> pull them into your home, it brings yeah. you joy. And that's that contributes to cozy, I think, beyond these things that we know are just by nature, cozy and comfortable. For sure. And I love that. But I actually, I'm going to ask you to kind of almost dig a little deeper just to, 
to clarify because there's that fine line, if yes. you will, right? And I kind of shamed you a little bit when I was like tchotchkes. That was a little <laughs> judgy. Didn't mean it to come across that way. But but I think, you know, again, we we talk a lot, obviously, on this show about keeping what's important and reducing the unnecessary clutter, right? I define yes. clutter for me, clutter is something that's not serving you, right? Mm -hmm. It's not, it's not serving your mental state. It's not serving you physically, whatever it is, like it's not serving your time. And so where do you, so using like your example of your little figurines that, mm -hmm. that brings you, that brings you joy and it gives you that coziness, warm, safe feeling, bringing you back how do you set boundaries mm -hmm. of how much is enough? Right. Where do I put them? How do I have them in a place that they're not just then accumulating and becoming clutter? Like where mm -hmm. does that, how, how do you make those, that differentiation for somebody listening out there going, you know, I love to collect things, but then that it, the collections start to take over you. Mm -hmm. I think that was something that I really had to actually develop and determine for myself, because I think when people think of cozy, they think about every surface being covered with some, you know, like it is, it is like very part and parcel to clutter. I think what happened for me is I started to feel overwhelmed, right? I had too many things and too many like things that brought me joy, but I was accumulating too much. And so for me, I went through a phase where I started getting rid of things. I started creating rules around what I would buy and what I wouldn't. And for instance, a perfect example is I don't buy any tchotchkes now, um, but I follow a girl who does handmade ceramics and she makes these little plant stakes that have characters on them. And so I've purchased a few of those things to support small female owned business and they're in my plants and they're just tucked away. And most people don't know they're there, but I do. Mm -hmm. And, and I have a rule of keeping my counters clutter free. So I think it's finding a way to either appreciate that thing and mm -hmm. not have to bring it all into your home um, or creating rules around, okay, you know what? I'm going to get rid of these five things and just keep this one. That's really like actually meaningful to me. And it can sit in a windowsill, but I don't need to buy any more, <laughs> you know, yeah. and, and I can, and I can go to an antique store and I can appreciate and I don't have to own, you know, but finding a way, you know, even if it's like on one little corner of your dresser, you just have that one little thing that brings you joy. Um, yeah. But telling yourself, one is enough or two is enough. And if I want something else, then I'm going to get rid of this, even though it's tiny, right? These things accumulate. And so starting to say yes and no about how I'm spending my money and making sure that I'm not just accumulating more for the sake of having more. Yeah, totally. Can you talk a little bit about this values-based thinking and how that incorporates and like what people you know, how do you define that? And if someone's going, okay, I want to start to create this. And, you know, there's a couple of things I want to talk about, because I think it's, especially as we're coming into the holiday season, which is typically a season for the most part. And I know there are people that are by themselves and hopefully they have some sense of community, but it's a season of abundance, right? It's a, it, mm -hmm. it's a lot of food and it's a lot of gathering and it also can translate to a lot of stuff. And so, you know, whether we're doing this now or we're saying, okay, we're going to get through the season. And then as we move into the new year, we want to kind of like start the new year off with a clean slate, so to speak, and start to make smarter choices, but we're really not sure how to go about doing it. So all of this to say, I want you to unpack the values-based thinking. And then I also, after that, I'd love for you to talk about the pitfalls or the that you talk about, because I know we've talked offline about mm -hmm. our five clutter pitfalls and there was some overlap about kind of ways that people can start to create this in their own lives. So I'll let you address it in whichever order makes sense. Okay. Well, so first I'm thinking just apart from the new year, right? Going into the holiday season, um, I think 
sometimes we, we can make decisions for what we're going to bring into our house, how we're going to spend money, how, what types of gifts we're going to buy. And sometimes outside of that, like we can't control maybe what grandparents do. Right. Um, and so, but we can decide and ask, like one thing we've done is started to ask for experiential gifts instead mm -hmm. of things. Um, and so one year my in-laws, um, started paying for our daughter's swim lessons and sure she had, you know, other things to open, but for us, that's been a gift that has really meant something and it's helped her to develop a really great skill. So sometimes, you know, it's more about shifting your brain away from accumulating more things and how are other ways that we can create meaning and is there a gift or an opportunity in that for us mm -hmm. a membership to a museum or something like that can we ask for grandparents or family members maybe to contribute to something like that um I think in terms of going into the new year one thing I like to talk about with people of this like totally dovetails with you is before I can think about how I want to reorient my space toward my values, I need to eliminate the things <laughs> that are causing, right? Like stress or confusion. And so sometimes it's literally going through every room and packing stuff up and going back to a clean slate and getting a reset and then really strategically thinking through based on your values and how you want to live in the space, what still belongs, what goes back. Um, and so when I work with clients, you know, if we're addressing, you know, a living, like a, let's say a dining room area, like you said, can easily turn into a dumping ground, but the mom is envisioning these family meals and connection around the table. Um, what we'll do is first start identifying what the value is. How do you actually want to use the space? Like if, if, organization wasn't a problem, if stuff wasn't a problem, if bad habits, right, of just dumping right. weren't a problem, what would you love that space to be? And how would it feel? And, you know, what, what sort of things are you envisioning? And then we start talking about, well, what are the frustrations and the obstacles and what's keeping you from utilizing that space for the connection that you actually want. And then God, we- sounds exactly just, like what I do. Oh yeah, my gosh, you and then we- with me. That's, that's, <laughs> that's exactly and then, what we do. Yeah, and then we just talk really strategically about how do we raise and lower thresholds to make that possible? And what I mean, how do we make it more difficult to do the things you don't wanna do, right? Mm, like maybe maybe we're identifying you need better storage, you need you know better habits as a family. That means the kids need hooks for it so their backpacks don't end up on, whatever it is. Um, what do you wanna do less of? So let's make it harder to do that. And what do you wanna do more of? And let's make it easier to do that. Yeah, I, I love it. And again, it really, I, I say it jokingly, but it really truly is such an alignment with our approach because so many people, again, just say they walk into their space and they're like, I don't like it. I'm not happy. It doesn't feel like me, but they have difficulty maybe articulating. And it's sometimes when you are just feeling overwhelmed in mm -hmm. life, it's hard to even know. It's hard to mm -hmm. know what do you want? And I love that you talk about, cause we have this, our ESP empty sort purge. That's our kind of our mm -hmm. little kitschy motto thing for organizing a space. And I say, it's so hard to see the forest through the trees, right? Mm -hmm. So for you, it's like, I can't even envision what I, I can't even imagine for some people like, what would I really want my space to look like? Because right now every surface is littered with magazines or whatever it is, you know, stuff. And so once you remove it, then it's like, I have this clean slate and coming in with the approach of, okay, now that it's gone, even if it's not mm -hmm. fully gone, gone, mm -hmm. what do I want to put back in? And mm -hmm. that, you know, I think that's just, it's brilliant. It's so simple when you think about it, but it's, it's brilliant because it really does change your mindset. It's very hard to say, what do you want to remove? When you say, what do you want to remove when you're looking at this? It, it's all the decision fatigue wheels start to turn, right? Oh my God, so-and-so gave mm -hmm. this to me, whatever, blah, 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 blah. And we can yes. often for so many people spiral and overthink it. But when you're like, okay, we're just not, we're just going to take it all away mm -hmm. just temporarily. 
right? Mm -hmm. So it's not a permanent thing. We're just going to take this away and then we can choose what we want to put back in. That changes, it removes this layer of responsibility and anxiety for the decision-making process. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think too, you know, people are thinking when they're bringing me in, they're thinking about interior decorating, you know, and, and what I, what I want to do also is help them to identify, like, if the problem is literally like, oh no, we don't dump everything on the dining table, but I have to pull out the vacuum two, twice a day, or I have to whatever to get under, then sometimes I'll just encourage, well, maybe the solution for this room is that you actually buy a robot vacuum. (laughs) Like, you know, because that might seem like an excessive purchase and you don't have to buy a super expensive one or you can wait for Amazon Prime Day or whatever. But what that is going to give back to you in your own frustration and your own connection time, the time it takes to pull the vacuum out and do the work. Right. It's simplifying your time. It's worth it. Right. Absolutely. And, and it's that, it's that mental load too, right? It's like a frustration that every time you look at it, you're like, Oh, I have to vacuum, you know, Oh, another cheese it, you know, it's like that, that is worth something eliminating that. Oh, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. So, um, you're also in the process of writing a book. Want to talk about that. I know putting (laughs) it out into the world. Um, you're in the process of writing a book. So again, you know, there's so I, I I don't know anybody that's like I don't like cozy, you know. So <laughs> right. what is your what is your goal with the book? Like, who is this gonna book gonna be for? Um, we're gonna have links right now, just giving everyone a heads up. Um, make sure you connect up with Amber. Sign up for her, you know, email coziness, um, just so that you stay in the loop. So that when it does come out, you guys can go get it because I'm sure it's gonna be amazing. Um, kind of what prompted you to want to turn all of this into a book and what's your mission with that? Well, I think it's probably similar to what you experienced. You know, you said we're talking specifically about like overlap, right? Is that the the more that I would help clients, the more I would realize how much emotional like connection there is in our homes. And when things are in disarray, how that affects us. Um, And that kind of this idea that the longer I helped people, the more I realized, no, our houses are actually telling us things about us. And, you know, and this is specifically, you know, what we talked about with your book too, is that this idea that, you know, we have the term house shame, that feeling like when someone unexpectedly stopped by, stops by, or your mother-in-law, whatever, you're going to run, you're going to throw everything in that one room, you're going to shut the door. Or you think if someone saw, you know, inside your car, or they saw in that particular closet or your attic, you would just lose it. And the more I realize, it's like, well, no, that house shame is actually just shame. And this thing in my house is triggering that, but that's telling me something about me. And so um, it's, it's kind of that I began to observe that there was these themes. There was, you know, obligation and guilt that people felt like they, right? Like they got that from their grandmother and it doesn't go with anything, but they can't get rid of it, right? They feel um, guilt about that or perfectionism, right? That Mm. there's this pressure to look exactly like everyone on Instagram and buy all the things. And then you have all this stuff that's trendy, but it's not really you. And you're always grasping to keep up. Um, that there's all these different kinds of things, shame and obligation and perfectionism, inability to make a decision. You know, I've had people that are like, oh yeah, I'm gonna, you know, I've been wanting to paint these cupboards for five years, but I just can't decide on the color. And starting to lean in with some curiosity around what's actually beneath that. Um, And I think, right, like if you've ever seen, you know, Hoarders or Fixer Upper, these shows that we watch on TV or even um, Queer Eye, right? Like, we know that there are emotional components and baggage positively and negatively that are connected to our houses. And so my book is kind of starting to explore some of those ideas and then how to move beyond that to actually think from a values-based design perspective and not have those hangups, but actually to be more intentional about how you're designing from your values. Because ultimately what you want is for your home to be a place of peace and joy for you and for anyone who comes over, 
You want it to feel like a reflection of you and the life that you really want and for it to set you up better to live into those values too. Thank you. First of all, thank you for kind of walking through that. I was just, if anyone's watching on YouTube and they saw, I was just kind of taking some notes on, on things that Amber was saying that, you know, I think really resonated. So for somebody that's listening out there mm -hmm. that, and maybe they've been, you know, again, if you're starting off new, right? Like let's say I'm okay, great. I can start off, you know, my, on a, on a clean slate, but for so many people that are already, they've been married several years, maybe they have a couple kids, their life is a little, they're, they're in survival mode, right? They're in yeah, survival mode yeah. and, and, and their house for, because we live in this kind of overscheduled world, um, for lack of a better word, like our house often becomes like a drop zone in and of itself. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. unfortunately the house becomes the afterthought because there's all these other fires that need to get put out on the daily. Mm -hmm. Does it start with a conversation between a couple? So like, if there's someone listening, this is, this sounds great. I really would love to just do this. You know, does it start with a conversation between a husband and wife to say, what do we really want? Like, what's, what are our, like, how does somebody get to the point of actually taking action? Because like so many things, people are going to be like, this sounds great. Wish I could do that. But then not take that next step to making it happen, making it a reality. Mm -hmm. I think at the very least, um, if you can sit down yourself and, and start answering some questions, like, just disconnected, right? Like remove all the rules, like disconnected from everything else. What sorts of things bring you an irrational amount of joy okay. <laughs> in your house, outside your house? Um, what things do you like? Can you articulate what it is about that thing that's very life-giving to you? I think also then making a list that kind of explores the frustrations, right? Like, because there are big things and little things in our homes that chip away at us. For instance, you might have a big project that needs to be done. And every time you look at it, you're like, oh, this kitchen. But there's also these tiny things, right? Like an outlet cover that has a chipped corner or doesn't match. And every time you walk by it, you just feel annoyed that that outlet cover doesn't match. Like things like that, starting to write down frustrations um, separate, right? So the things that bring you joy, the things that are currently really frustrating. Mm -hmm. And then uh, if there was no rules, how would I want my home to feel and function? Um, you know, if I had all the money in the world, right? Like shoot high and then get practical. And because here's the thing, it's like, no matter what your budget is, no matter how much time you have, you might never be able to, to like have your actual dream home, but you can find what you love about that and find a way within your budget and your skill set to articulate that in your home. You can find a way um, to have the home that you want that is reflective, right, of, of this, this idea, but that also creates a space where you can live in your values and do the things that really bring you to life. So I think if you can do some of that work and just try to identify some of those things, then if you have a partner you can start to bring that conversation to them and say, these are some of the things I've identified. Um, these are some of the things that have come to the surface. And between the two of you, I think it's easier than to prioritize. Um, I think the other big piece you touched on to consider is the stage of life that you're in, right? Totally. It's like, if you have teeny kids, if your dream is a cream couch, cool. <laughs> <laughs> But like, do you know what I mean? Like, can, totally. you, you have to know, okay, I can choose this right now, but do I want the pressure of having the rules around the food and the juice cups and the constant cleaning and the frustration that comes with that? Or do I wait five years and just be happy with what I have right now, understanding this is the season that I'm in and this won't last forever. This is a longer term goal and I'm really going to appreciate it when it's time. But if I do it now, it's actually going to cause me frustration. And so considering all those things right together, you doing the work yourself, you bringing it to a spouse or partner and, and having just a real honest conversation about what's actually possible um, and what solutions can you do now that are really practical for your stage of life. And then maybe what you do in five or 10 years, that's the next iteration of that. I love it. And I mean, I, again, feverishly writing down, because 
so much of it is great. I, I love it for multiple reasons. First of all, when you write it down and you have this kind of like, these are the five things or whatever. I don't know if that's the mm-hmm. magic number or not. Sure. But like I have these things that are really important to me. When we start to feel overwhelmed, which again is natural for all of us, when we're going through the day-to-day habits, organization, decluttering, whatever you're doing, you can come back and hit pause. When you're starting to feel out of alignment, you can come back and go, wait, is this right here, whatever is happening, does that align with these things? And if the Mm -hmm. answer is no, Mm -hmm. then you can, you've set a boundary. Like these things are basically like a boundary. And so it can remove the pressure, I feel like for people to Mm -hmm. go, I've already established that this is what's important to me. So me buying this, bringing this in, not taking the extra two minutes to hang up my coat and just dropping the mail on the dining room table. I know I'm picking on the dining room table, but you know what I mean? It's just like that easy Mm -hmm. image. You know, that is is not keeping true to what we set here, that we set Mm -hmm. the intention, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. So I love that. And I also love- the budget comment and the season of life, because I think Mm -hmm. that's so true. And I talk about this in hot mess that, you know, one of the, one of the questions that I get for, or questions slash comments I get from people is either when is the best time to get organized Mm -hmm. or I'm going to wait until, and -hmm. there's never that until that is that perfect time. Right. We, Mm -hmm. so what can I do now, given the situation that I'm in? And so If you know, you don't have to live in a state of chaos. You don't have to live in a state where you're not aligned. You can do little things and maybe you don't have a lot of money. So maybe coziness to you means I'm just going to bring in a candle and I'm going to go to home goods and buy a blanket for $14.99. You know what I mean? And that's what I'm going to do, right? Or I'm going to get, like you said, just some fresh flowers. My college daughter said, you know what? I yeah. And she, she's like, I get fresh flowers and I put it on our kitchen table once a week because it just makes me feel good. And she probably gets it from the grocery store. She's not going to some right. crazy bar, you know? So there are little things that can just make you feel like this is my space. This is a sanctuary or whatever. And if you're in a place, like maybe you've got lots of kids and lots of things going on, I would suspect that you can even just start in a small room, like make it your room or your bathroom start. Don't think that you have to do the whole house at once. It's yes. Shipping away. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think too, I think it's important to note when you're doing the work around identifying your values um, is when, when you think about something, a time when you felt really alive or that something that brought you joy. And then you kind of start to think, what are other times that I felt that same thing? You know, I realized that, when I would sing with my brother-in-law, he had the guitar and he and I would sing together. I got that. I got the same feeling doing that as I did when I would go over to my friend's house and she had this basement craft room. I mean, she was like a maximalist in terms of paints (laughs) and all that. And I would go to her house and we would do like an art project together. And those were very different things. But when I started to think about how the feeling was the same beneath those, I realized, oh, I actually really love doing something, creating something with a person I love. Mm -hmm. And so it was like, even though those things were very disconnected in my life, when I started to explore what was under it, then I saw, oh, it's in all these other things that are very different, but it's the same. So then I could say, oh, it's actually really important for me to do, to create beautiful things with people I love. And I can apply that at the holidays. I can apply that by creating a space for art for my husband and I and our daughter. I can create that. And so the expression of that value might show up in my house. It also might just show up in the way I make decisions and what I commit myself to. Um, And, you know, a friend of mine, when she was doing this work in the class too, she identified a value of intentionality. And you know, now that, that value is what she chooses to make all of her decorating decisions in her house. She only buys things she totally loves and she's intentional about. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I think 
even though they don't necessarily feel connected to your house or your space, if you do some of that values work and you can yeah. name what's actually beneath it, then you can find a way to express it in your space. Yeah. And we do a lot of work. Um, I, a, a lot of work just in life and with the people who I coach and mentor about values in your business also, like, what do you, mm -hmm. Like, who do you want to be? What is it that you want people to know? How do you want to be known, right? And like, what is mm -hmm. it that you're doing? And so again, you can apply this. I, I think there's so much, no pun intended, value in doing <laughs> these types of exercises for mm -hmm. all aspects of your life, for parenting, for being a partner in business mm -hmm. and for your home. I think it's mm -hmm. so, it's so important. And when I come back to it, like it allows me because there's, so, we all know that there's so much outside distraction, right? There's social media. And again, I have this thing. We all have a love hate relationship with social media. It's great for yes. inspiration. It's can be bad for comparison and smoke and mirrors and all that stuff. But when you come back to like, for me, I'm like, if you ask me, my values are authenticity, integrity, communication, service, like time, like those are my things. So if I'm doing something or I'm thinking about embarking on a new project for work, I will always come back and say, is this project feeding my ego? Is it, mm -hmm. am I chasing something that I feel like I should be doing or is it coming back? And I think that is so such a great, grounding piece for us to do when it comes to our homes. Um, and I think it I gets it. into your, your topic of calendar clutter too, because if, the value, you know, yeah. if your value is to be, to sit around the dinner table and have dinner together at least five nights a week, then that's going to make like a yes or no decision on that additional soccer team or that whatever, you know? So true. So, mm -hmm. so true. I, I love it. Well, I could talk to you for like days. You and I could definitely <laughs> like talk for days on this. Um, but tell our listeners, what's the best place to find you? I know you have some great resources on your website. We know the book's not out now, but we want people to be able to still connect up with you so they can stay in the loop for, you know, when that does come to be. So Lay yeah, so you can you can yeah. um, go to my website, thecozinessconsultant.com. Um, and in the nav bar, there's a place where you can sign up for the email list and um, be the first to know anything. And then when you do that, you'll get a free download, free PDF. Uh, you can also follow me on Instagram or Facebook at The Coziness Consultant. Um, and also you can um, access the links in my Instagram bio for a bunch of other things that are available. So. Yeah, absolutely. So, well, and of course, for anybody new to our show, we put all of the links for everything that we talked about in our show notes on our podcast page. So don't worry about race, looking for a pen to feverishly write that down. We will allow you to connect up with Amber at your leisure. So we'll have all of that. We're going to take a quick break and then we're going to just come back and wrap this up by putting you in the hot seat for our hot mess minute question. So okay. sit tight. <laughs> All right, Amber. So, um, thank you again so much for coming on. My pleasure. Not only do I love this topic, um, but I, I think this is a great time of year for people to really lean into that because we can get on autopilot present mm -hmm. company included mm -hmm. and lose sight really of what we're trying to achieve because we're going through all the motions and doing all the things and buying gifts and going to parties and blah, 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 all the stuff. So hopefully this episode will like give people a pause and some direction of where to go. And that's my hope for that. So, um, so too. thank you for that. <laughs> okay. So we know that you like books. Um, what book? And this is a great cozy question, right? So I love the asking pressure. this question. Yeah, there's pre the pressures on. Mm -hmm. So in your life, is there a book either that you go back to kind of that's like a something that's like in your arsenal or something that you recommend to other people that has been impactful that you can share with us? Can I say two? You can. Okay. So for um, some of that internal work that we've talked about, identifying some of those things that you feel bubbling up or triggered about, I love Atlas of the Heart by Brene Ooh. Brown mm -hmm. because I feel like she, I mean, 
she just covers so the the gambit of things, emotions, feelings, and defining it, I think is a really good way to help you identify <laughs> and to yeah. distinguish between what you're actually dealing with. Um, so I go back to that one a lot. Um, and then the other one I love is the art of gathering by Priya Parker. I love that book. I don't know if I did. Ever, yeah. Oh, really? Oh, okay. I don't know. I'm trying to um, think if anybody's given that. I'm always, I, I'm curious, like when we see repeat books and I'm not sure if that one was ever, but I do, I like that book and people would think yeah, I don't like that book because it's about the art of gathering, but I mean, um, but yeah. what I think is really helpful in there, you know, and I've never heard the thing that sticks out to me a lot that I bookmark and go back to because it gets cloudy is she talks about, you know, when you're gathering a group of people, um, not to feel bad that you don't invite everyone, because if you're going to have a dinner party, it's really important that you actually think through the personalities and the dynamics of people that you're welcoming into your home, um, because you want it to be a peaceful, enjoyable evening. And you don't want one person that controls the whole conversation and another person that just sits and listens, right? Like strategically how you put people at a table, who you invite. Mm -hmm. um, she also has like breakdowns for sizes of groups that feel intimate, how you can scale that there's like particular breaks, um, which uh, my sister and I have coordinated several women's events. And we have used that strategy to determine um, how many people to allow um, to purchase tickets because we don't care if it gets larger, but we still want it to feel intimate. And so she gives right. a really good breakdown of what sizes um, of groups to consider. So I love both that. of those books. I love they're great, great books. Love them just in time. If you guys, hey, great stocking stuffers. If you're looking for stuff, yeah. so hit it. And then of course, our final two questions that we ask all of our guests, which are, which in this season of your life. Mm -hmm. Where do you feel the most organized and where do you feel like a little bit of a hot mess? Because we're all a little bit of a hot mess, Amber. So join the club. I would say currently the ratio of hot mess is much higher uh, because we're in, I'm in a transition professionally. Our daughter just is in kindergarten for the first time. We're doing a lot of transitioning. Um, I do feel organized, I think, in my brain in terms of my goals, I think that's my good. headspace. That's I think my really headspace good. feels really organized. Um, the hot mess is kind of yeah. We're you know changing seasonal clothing around the house. It's like yeah. you know we're we're starting to adjust some things around here. And so right now I've got piles around. So my house is is falling by the wayside of my mental clarity at the moment. Hey, listen, you have your faculties. That's what matters. And again, we talk here a lot about situational clutter and what you're describing happens to a lot of us. And again, at the time that this episode airs, a lot of us are going to be experiencing situational clutter and it's not mm -hmm. always a bad thing. It could be around good things. It could be I've got UPS coming to my house to drop stuff off. I'm wrapping presents. I'm doing things. I have, I'm baking Christmas cookies or whatever you, holiday you celebrate, but you know what I mean? So yes, going to be things that might be out of alignment on the surface, but it's okay because that's what living in, you know, the whole point of living an organized life is it ebbs and flows, right? We mm -hmm, don't live in mm -hmm. Pinterest or Instagram or <laughs> any of that other stuff. So, um, You'll get there. You'll get there. And well, and I think if we think anyone does live in Pinterest, then we're doing ourselves a disservice. <laughs> For sure. For sure. Well, Amber, again, thank you so much. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode as much as I did. Um, definitely share it with a friend. Make sure, do, do your friends a favor, click the share button. If you feel so inclined, we love um, when you write us a review, not just for our egos, but it just gives social cred for other people with a saturated podcast market, we continue to are able to grow our audience because of people like you leaving mm -hmm. reviews and recommendations and spreading like our messaging with the people in your world. So thank you for doing that. I hope you guys have a great week and I'll be back for another episode next week of This Organized Life. Peace out. Thanks for tuning in. If you like this episode, please spread the love and share it with your friends. 
And if this is your first time joining us, make sure to click the subscribe button wherever you're listening so you never miss an episode. And while you're there, please leave us a review so other people know that our show is worth the listen. You can also find us on YouTube and Instagram at This Organized Life Podcast. And if you'd like to connect with us, you can head on over to our website at simply the letter B, like boy, organized.com, which is filled with tons of resources, including free downloads, checklists, links to our amazing organizing partners, and all of our digital offerings. I'll see you next week for another episode of This Organized Life.